Chris Christopherson, the beloved actor and country music singer-songwriter, died at home in Maui on September 28. Chris Christopherson, the renowned actor and country singer-songwriter, has died. He was 88. A representative for the star said he was surrounded by family when he died peacefully at his home in Maui on Saturday, September 28. It is with a heavy heart that we share the news our husband slash father slash grandfather, Chris Christopherson, passed away peacefully on Saturday, September 28 at home. We're all so blessed for our time with him. Thank you for loving him all these many years, and when you see a rainbow, know he's smiling down at us all, his family said in a statement shared with people. Christopherson was born on June 22, 1936, in Brownsville, Texas, to Marianne, Nash Brook, and Lars Henry Christofferson, a first-generation Swedish immigrant and U.S. Army Air Corps officer and Air Force general. His love for country music began at a young age, and, according to a 2013 interview with NPR, Christofferson penned his first song, I Hate Your Ugly Face, at only 11 years old. A military brat, he moved often throughout his childhood until his family landed in San Mateo, California, when he was a teenager. Per his official website, Christofferson had two short stories, Gone Are the Days and the Rock, published in Atlantic Monthly at the age of 18. In 1954, he attended Pomona College in California, where he played football, was crowned a Golden Gloves boxer and served as sports editor of the school paper. His athleticism and academic achievements landed him on the cover of Sports Illustrated's Faces in the Crowd issue during his senior year in 1958. After graduating with his bachelor's degree in creative writing from Pomona, Christofferson earned a Rhodes Scholarship and his master's in English literature at Oxford University's Merton College in 1960. As reported by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, Christofferson's parents urged him to enlist in the military after college. He joined the U.S. Army and, within five years, became a helicopter pilot and reached the rank of captain. While serving in West Germany in the early 60s, Christofferson continued to explore songwriting and formed a band with other soldiers. Upon completion of his tour of duty in Germany, Christofferson was offered a job teaching English at West Point Military Academy. He soon made his way to Nashville, Tennessee, while on leave, which reinvigorated his passion for music and led to him resigning from the Army in 1965. I just fell in love with the music community that was going on there, he told Clash in 2010 of the country music scene in Nashville. The way the old heroes helped out the new guys. It was a very soulful business at the time, I don't know if it's anything like that now. But it was definitely the best move I've ever made. In Nashville, Christofferson submitted songs he wrote while working as a night janitor at Columbia Studios, including For the Good Times and Sunday Morning Coming Down. Originally recorded by singer Bill Nash in 1968, for the Good Times didn't achieve mainstream success until Ray Price released his version in June 1970, shortly after the song appeared on Christofferson's debut album in April of that year. The track earned a Grammy nod for Best Country Song in 1972 and famously covered by soul music icon Earl Green. Penned by Christofferson and also recorded for his first album. Sunday Morning Coming Down captured the attention of Nashville crooner Ray Stevens and country music legend Johnny Cash. Cash's rendition for the Johnny Cash Show Live album won Song of the Year at the CMA Awards in 1970 and reached number one on Billboard's country music chart. Other covers would follow, including Me and Bobby Magico written with Fred Foster and released on Janis Joplin's 1971 posthumous album, Pearl. The song became one of Christofferson and Joplin's biggest hits, reaching number one on the pop charts and earning two Grammy nominations in 1972 for Best Country Song and Song of the Year. That same year, Christofferson took home his first ever Grammy for Best Country Song for Sammy Smith's version of Help Me Make It Through the Night. Throughout the 70s, Christofferson continued to release albums and singles as a recording artist, among which were Loving Her Was Easier, Than Anything I'll Ever Do Again, and the two-time Grammy-nominated song Why Me. He also collaborated with country singer Rita Coolidge, his second wife on several joint albums. 
The pair won two Grammys for 1973's From the Bottle to the Bottom and their 1975 rendition of Clyde McFatter's 1962 hit Lover Please. He is a poet rather than a musician, more concerned with interpretation than with quality of voice, the New York Times wrote in a 1970 profile. He is at once blunt and mystical, above petty prejudices, strongly appealing to both the campus and to intellectual sets. He is an important link between country, pop and underground music. Christofferson's talents extended beyond music and songwriting. He was featured in films like Cisco Pike, 1972, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, 1973, and Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, 1974. In 1974, Christofferson told Rolling Stone he felt confident about his foray into Hollywood despite a lack of formal training. I'd never even been in no school play, but I read the, Cisco Pike, script, and I could identify with this cat, this dope dealer, he explained. People said, don't do it, take acting lessons first. But it seemed to me that acting must be just understanding a character and then being just as honest as you can possibly be. It was never far behind, though. Christofferson formed a country supergroup with Cash, Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson called The Highwaymen. Their first album, Highwaymen, and its titular single topped the country charts in 1985. The band released two more albums, 1990's Highwaymen 2 and 1995's The Road Goes On Forever. Christofferson amassed numerous awards and honors over the course of his decades-long career including three Grammy wins and a Lifetime Achievement Honor from the Recording Academy in 2014. He also received an Oscar nomination in 1985 for Best Original Song for the Movie Songwriter, where he starred alongside band member Nelson. In 2004, he was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. In 2013, the actor-musician opened up about his experience with memory loss. Doctors originally misdiagnosed him with Alzheimer's disease, though it was actually Lyme disease, per CBS News. However, according to his wife, Lisa Christofferson, name I ers, he sought treatment and saw improvement within weeks. He was taking all these medications for things he doesn't have, and they all have side effects, Lisa told Rolling Stone in 2016. She added, all of a sudden, he was back. There are still bad days, but some days he's perfectly normal, and it's easy to forget that he is even battling anything. Following the release of his final studio album, The Cedar Creek Sessions, in 2016, the country icon formally announced his retirement from music in 2021 and shared that Morris Higham management was representing his estate. Christofferson is the artist that every artist strives to be. MHM president and partner Clint Hyam wrote in a statement. He is an artist's artist. If Mount Rushmore had a place for songwriters, Chris would be on it. When asked what he believed to be the secret of life, Christofferson told Men's Journal in 2017, I had a list of rules I made up one time. It says, tell the truth, sing with passion, work with laughter, and love with heart. Those are good to start with anyway. Christofferson is survived by his wife Lisa, eight children and seven grandchildren. He was previously married to Francis Beer, with whom he welcomed daughter Tracy in 1962 and son Chris in 1968. He and Coolidge had their daughter, Casey, in 1974. He is also the father of five children with Lisa, including Jesse, 1983, Jody, 1985, John, 1988, Kelly Marie, 1990, and Blake, 1994.